That was beautiful. Well, this morning is preparation uh, Sunday for uh, Lord's Supper. Next Sunday, Lord willing, um, we will be uh, celebrating the Lord's Supper. Now, this coming Lord's Supper is going to be a little bit unusual, and we we ask as as a council a little bit for your for your grace and uh, mercy on that. We we had had a plan uh, to purchase uh, some elements in sanitary individual cups. Uh, but unfortunately, they were all sold out, and so we are not able to do that. However, uh, we do have a plan, and it will be a little bit out of the ordinary for, uh, for us. However, uh, we encourage you to uh, participate anyways, and we want to also encourage you that regardless um, of, of how we participate, uh, God is here and is with us, um, and he is the host of this feast, um, regardless of what it looks like. So let me uh, detail a little bit of that first uh, before we get into uh, the, the preparation in, in, in other details. So uh, next week, we invite you, if you are coming to church, to bring along your own elements. Okay, so you can bring juice or wine, um, and you can bring uh, bread uh, to share with the people in your bubble or just for yourself, uh, whatever works best for you. And I would encourage you, when, when our council members uh, take time to prepare the bread and the wine, um, we, we invite them and we remind them to, to do that preparation prayerfully. And I would invite you to do that at home. <clears throat> for, the, for the council members who prepare here at the church, they are putting you know, juice in many, many, many cups normally, and they are uh, cutting up like whole loaves of bread and putting them on the plates for communion. Um, Obviously, that is not going to happen in the way it normally does. But as you are at home preparing, take some time to think about and pray about how this bread and this juice or wine that you are preparing to bring with you are, are, are not just a, a normal meal in, in, a, in a way. Now, in another way, all meals are special and provided by God, and they are deeply meaningful and so on. But as we prepare for communion, as you, you cut up your bread or you pour your juice into whatever container you're going to bring, however you're going to do it, take some time to remind yourselves that this bread symbolizes Jesus' body, and that ju this juice or wine symbolizes his blood, and that together they symbolize for us the sacrifice that Christ made on the cross. Think about that as you prepare your elements. Now, if you are uncomfortable bringing your own elements, that's okay. That's fine. If you forget to bring your own elements, that's also okay. That's fine. Nobody is going to judge you in any way, uh, whether you've forgotten or whether you're uncomfortable or whatever. That is okay. I will take time during the communion to, to do our utmost to make everybody feel uh, welcome and comfortable regardless of whether they've brought elements or whether they haven't or, or whatever. So don't, don't sweat it too much in the sense of being worried about other people's judgment or, uh, oh no, I forgot or whatever. It's okay, okay? Hopefully the next time we do communion, we will be able to um, provide those elements ourselves, um, and uh, that will be good as well.
But remember on this Sunday that is Christ the King Sunday that our Lord is sovereign even over unusual circumstances like this one. And so um, communion, <laughs> whether it happens in the way that we traditionally do it or whether it happens in a way that is unusual because of the circumstances from the Lord's eyes, that doesn't matter. What matters is our hearts and how we are coming to this feast, which comes, which brings us to uh, the rest of communion preparation, which is remembering that the Lord commands us that whenever we eat and drink, we are to celebrate the Lord's, commemorate, remember the Lord's uh, coming and his death, his sacrifice, and his resurrection until he comes again. And so when we come to the Lord we, in communion, we are also called to ensure that we have done some soul searching. Right? Not, not that we come and we are perfect, but rather we come and we are humble and we recognize our need for Jesus and we recognize the gift that he gives us through Jesus Christ and the gift that he gives us through the Holy Spirit bringing us together so that we can commemorate his life, death, and resurrection together. But there is also a call for us to, if at all possible, make things right in our lives. And, and that includes making things right between ourselves and others. And so the Bible calls us to search ourselves and to ask ourselves if things in our relationships with others are not good. And if there are things in our relationships with others that are not good, we are asked to, uh, to try and make those things right. Now, the Lord knows. The Lord knows that there are some things that, humanly speaking, cannot be made right at a particular time. And sometimes the Lord calls us to make those things right at different times, or sometimes there are barriers that prevent us from being able to do so in some ways. But there is almost always something we can do to make things right in some way, even if it's within our own hearts. Let me give you a, a brief example. There was a time period where m myself and my sister uh, were somewhat estranged. Um, she was upset with something, uh, some things that I had said to her. And there was a time when things could not be made right between us because either she was not able to hear what I was saying or I was not able to say what I needed to say or maybe hear what she needed to say. I don't know what it was. Eventually, that was made right and it was good. But I needed to, when there was communion, I needed to search my heart and see whether or not there was any way for me to build bridges or whether I was harboring bitterness or I was harboring unforgiveness or whether I was harboring anger against her. And I needed to confess that and make that right. Okay. This is what we're talking about. 
And in like manner, if there, is, if there are things in your life that are, you know, you are rebelliously digging in your heels against God with regards to a sin in your life or several sins in your life or, or, or giving over a part of your life that you have been withholding from God, you need to take some time to conscientiously poke around and seek to give those things over to God and ask for His his forgiveness. Maybe you are too focused on material things, or maybe you are too focused on the worries of this world, or maybe you are trying too hard to keep control over your life when you know that God is the one who is supposed to be in control. Or, or maybe you are, are worrying too much about the state of the world instead of giving that over to God. Poke around. Are there sins that you are harboring in your life? That you are saying to God, yeah, yeah, uh, deal me with me except for about this. I don't want to talk about that. Give those over to God. Gwyneth has been reading a book about shame. And in it, and I'm paraphrasing, and I'm sorry, I'm going to paraphrase it badly probably. It talks about how shame separates us from each other and from God. Shame is that, that wanting to hide whatever it is from everyone else and even sometimes from ourselves. And God doesn't want us to live lives of shame. But to get out of a life of shame requires so much vulnerability. It requires admitting the truth to God. It requires admitting the truth to ourselves. And sometimes, maybe often, it requires admitting the truth to someone we love so that we can be free of the shame. The Lord's Supper is, as I've always said, a bittersweet thing. It is a thing, a celebration of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ, of the love that He has given us, that He would empty Himself of everything and become in very nature a servant, and that He would live His life as a servant to God and to others, and that He would die on the cross for us in service to us and that he would he would sacrifice everything for us and that is love beyond anything but it is also a little bit bitter maybe a lot bitter sometimes because it was our sin that caused him to die But because of his sacrifice, it need no longer be shameful. We do not need to cower in shame. Instead, vulnerably and humbly and honestly, we open our hearts to him. And maybe we're afraid, but we find that when we do so, his arms are open. And like the father in the story of the prodigal son, God comes running to us, embracing us with love in spite of all that we have done. And our sin is erased with grace. 
So this week, as you prepare the elements and throughout the week, take some time to contemplate not only who God is and that he longs to release you from shame and, and that you can live a life that is free from that shame, but also contemplate and poke around and see whether there are areas in your life, relationships or sins that you have been withholding from God out of shame shame or pride or anger and try to give those things to God and through his Holy Spirit he will enable you to release those things into his hands let us pray father in heaven we confess O oh God that you are indeed the sovereign king of all things. And that even though, even though we seek to hide some, so often our sin from you, <laughs> as if that were possible, you know our sins. And you love us nonetheless. Father, as we prepare to come to communion, please help us through the power of your Holy Spirit to see those areas of our lives that we may be hiding from you, again, as if that were possible. May we, through your Holy Spirit, become more vulnerable and more honest that we may release the shame and live in your love and your grace and your mercy in jesus name amen our words of assurance this morning come from colossians 1 verse 15 to 20 in which we read these words so appropriate for uh, this day christ the king sunday but also for what we have just spoken about the son is the image of the invisible god the firstborn over all creation for in him all things were created things in heaven and on earth visible and invisible whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities all things have been created through him and for him he is before all things and in him all things hold together and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him, that is Jesus Christ, to reconcile to himself all things whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Reconcile all things by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. We'll invite the praise team forward, a.k.a. Diane and Karen, who's already here.